Hi everyone, it's Tom Mackey. Now you're joining me this week from the Dolomites where it's fair to say they've had a little bit of snow. Now I'm gonna set up and I'm gonna talk you through some mountain photography. So come with me and I'll show you how to do it. After a 4.30 start this morning, I decided to bring you up on top of one of the highest mountains in the Dolomites to talk a little bit about mountain photography. Now, as opposed to general landscape photography, there are all sorts of considerations uh, to take into account with mountain photography, which I'll go into a little bit later. But I want to set the scene here, what, what I've been doing in the last couple of days. Now, I've decided to come to this particular mountain because there's so many different compositions that I can get from this one little area. I've probably not strayed more than, say, a couple hundred yards from where I'm standing now. Now, yesterday, I had some cloudy conditions, which were quite nice, late in the afternoon at sunset. Um, it was probably about minus six degrees up here. I mean, one of the things um, I must say that we are shooting in springtime in the Dolomites. This is mid-May. You would never know it. I mean, they've had some terrific snowfalls over the winter. And just a few days ago, another snowfall. So I've layered up and uh, made sure I'm going to be warm up here because I've, I've pretty much stayed here uh, for hours on end shooting different compositions. So one of the main things to consider about mountain photography is the weather. Now, weather conditions can change drastically within minutes. Uh, it can be a threat, but also a photographic opportunity. Now, I always think that the best images that you can achieve are right on the edge of a system. So when you have these clouds rolling in, the lights changing, you're getting this light and shadow happening all the time. You can get some really great shots. I was here yesterday afternoon and the clouds rolled in, as you can see in this clip, changing the whole scene within minutes. I had light and shadow in the foreground and the background, so I had to wait until I had just the right sort of conditions. Okay, with just in the last few minutes, I've been watching this valley and the conditions have been changing by the minute. The mist has been rolling up right through this pass coming towards me. And I've had to get a few shots of this. Now, there's one consideration you should make. Now, I'm pretty much shooting almost into the sun. And if I look at the lens, I can see some specular highlights on the lens. So your chances of getting flare are going to be increased. So if I just cover it like that then I'm going to get rid of that flare there we go just like that just to check it make sure yeah that looks fantastic now what I'm doing here is I'm grabbing down the sky I've got a medium transition three stop neutral density grad and that's just coming down just to the top of the mountains to even out the exposure range and just slide that back in just there. Okay, so aperture, I'm shooting at f8. That's gonna be my optimal aperture for this scene because I don't have any foreground. So I wanna make sure the image is gonna be as sharp as possible. So I mentioned earlier about how drastic the weather conditions can change, but also you need to consider the lighting conditions and make a plan to capture and work an area so you get the best out of an area. So for example, this morning, first thing, I'm here for sunrise, but what generally happens in a mountain location is completely opposite direction to the sunrise. The mountains there will pick up this nice pink glow to the horizon line. So I shot that first and then concentrated on the sunrise. And then I'm thinking, okay, this mountain behind me is going to get some sun side lighting as soon as the sun comes up over those clouds and hits that mountain. So I want to make sure I get that. And this is very similar to what happened yesterday when I was photographing here. It was changing so quickly, I was set up on a wide angle lens on this, trying to get that light, casting a shadow in the foreground, getting that light and dark happening. But then also in the valley behind me, I had this beautiful panoramic. So I'm shooting with a telephoto, so I had to quickly change from wide angle to telephoto, and then also taking that a step further, coming in on just little tight compositions within that distant uh, mountain range. 
So I had some little tiny peaks picking up some light. It looked gorgeous. So I managed to get three different compositions from one position. And this is the beauty of mountain photography. If you're thinking on your feet, you can actually capture a multitude of different images from one location and working with the light as it's changing constantly. Okay, some further tips about mountain photography. Let's talk about filtration. Now, a lot of times when you're using a polarizer at high altitudes like this, you have the tendency to get really, really dark skies. Because the air is very clear, you're gonna get this really brilliant blue sky anyway. So if you hit that polarization to the max, it's gonna make it go too dark. So I usually just back it off a little bit. So other filters you might wanna consider using would be neutral density graduated filters. Now you would normally use these over the sky to balance out the foreground with the sky, but in this location, when you have a lot of snow in the foreground, consider using it underneath so that you're just controlling that glare off the surface of the snow. Now, yesterday when I was photographing the clouds rolling in, I was using an ND filter to get that burst effect of the clouds coming up from behind the mountain. Because so as I was looking at it, I thought, all oh, right, they're in the right direction. That's an important consideration. If you have them going side to side, it's okay, but behind a mountain, you want to get that really incredible burst effect coming out from behind it. So I used, um, I think it was about, it was a super stopper about five minutes to get that effect. Okay, now next, metering. Now, when you have a lot of snow around like this, it's generally gonna fool the meter. So you need to compensate for that by opening up at least a stop uh, to actually get a good exposure. I'm using matrix metering, so it's actually averaging out the four corners in the center. So that's gonna give you the best sort of average reading. So one of the most important considerations I think about mountain photography is to have a lot of patience. I mean, just sitting here watching the scenes change over the last couple of days, I've just seen some gorgeous scenes just transpire within minutes, go, and then instead of packing up the bags and going off to the next location, I stayed and I waited around and just watched what was going on. And then I saw things happen that I probably would have missed had I you know, gone off to that other location. So I hope this video has inspired you to get out and photograph some mountains over the next coming months. And thanks for coming out with me on this lovely morning in the Dolomites. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, do so now. Hit those like buttons and let me hear your comments. Thanks again. See you in the next video. Bye for now.